Welcome to Mountain Strong. Today I am at Panther Creek State Park and um, just gone down what's called the Ridgecrest Trail. Panther Creek State Park, obviously uh, we live in Alaska right now so you might want to know where this is. This is in Morristown, Tennessee and it's just a very small but a very beautiful uh, piece of land that's been set aside for public use. A lot of uh, trail systems uh, throughout the small park. Uh, you can come ride your bike here and do a little bit of hiking as well. Um, if you're going to the Smoky Mountains National Park, you're probably going to spend all of your time there. But if you live in this area, this is certainly a, a good place to stop by and, and enjoy a little bit uh, of a quieter place uh, to reflect upon the things that God has created. Today we're going to be having a look together at Psalm number 98. Let's go ahead and read that now. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arm have worked salvation for Him. The Lord has made known His salvation. He has revealed His righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered His steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. As I think about the words of this psalm, I can't help but think about Acts chapter 8 and verse 39, where the Bible says that the Ethiopian eunuch went on his way rejoicing. He went on his way rejoicing because he had just been saved because he had just been baptized into Christ. He had risen forth out of those waters of baptism in Christ and also in newness of life. And he was happy about it. When I think about the goal of my life and the goal of every Christian's life, the goal of our life really ought to be to return to that moment. And it's kind of sad that that's the case, you know. We rise up out of the waters of baptism and joy fills our heart. But over time, that joy becomes less impressive on us. We forget how great of a salvation we have received. We stop to reflect on the wonderful things that God has done for us, and we focus more on the sort of the routine nature of the life of faith. Joy and breaking forth in joy. I love the language of this psalm that's used throughout the Old Testament, but breaking forth in joy is the kind of joy that I think characterized the Ethiopian on that day, and the kind of joy that we see expressed here in these words. In verses 1 and 2, a hard work salvation of the Lord had been revealed. And you might say, why did I use the description hard work? When you see the right hand of God being extended and His arm being extended, not only is He using His strong hand, but the idea of His arm being extended means He's put His whole effort into it. And so His whole effort has been exerted and our salvation has been exercised. His right hand, His holy hand has been revealed in expressing strength to achieve what we needed it to achieve. That salvation that the Lord has given, described in verses 1 and 2, the psalmist says it has been given to all, certainly to the house of Israel, certainly to the people of God, but to everyone the salvation of God is extended. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God, it says. The response, of course, to that wonderful salvation that's been received is to break forth, to, to have this sort of joy that can't be restrained. I'm going to, as I've talked about in previous psalms, I'm going to reserve the comments on the manner of praise that's being described here until we talk about that great psalm that uh, utters forth praise and commands praise on those various instruments in Psalm 150. So you have to wait a long time to get there, uh, but we'll talk about that later. But realize just for today's purposes that uh, he is... Uh, he is just so excited and so happy about what God has done for him. And he's just saying, praise God and, uh, and don't hold back in doing so. The desire of the psalmist is not to be alone in praising God. He wants the entire world to join him in praising God. And so he calls the sea, he calls the rivers, he calls everything to come together in praise to God. And again, a consistent theme that you see in the book of Psalms is the idea that my voice in praise is not enough. I want the ends of the world to see the salvation that God has exercised for them. I want them to join me in praise. And so the psalmist wants the world to join him in praise, quite literally, the entire earth to join him in praise. And the reason for praise is because he comes. He comes in verse 9 to judge the world in righteousness and with equity or balance. And I think about those words and I think again 
about the New Testament situation. I don't know what all the psalmist had in mind when he said that and when the Spirit obviously inspired him to say that. But I think about the Christian today and I think about the fact that we have a joy because we have achieved a hard-worked salvation, uh, received rather a hard-worked salvation. God has, has exercised the greatest amount of effort possible in sending forth His Son to die for us on the cross. We rose from those waters. We rose to walk in newness of life. And joy should have been our response and should be our continual response. And if we ever are minded to forget about the joy that we had, remember that we will have a greater joy when He comes again. And joy ought to be the manner in which we receive Him. Imagine if our Lord would come and instead of being terrified, certain members of society, those who had experienced the salvation, turned to the skies and broke forth in spontaneous song. I think God's people need to do more of that, obviously not uh, ushering in the second coming of the Lord because that hasn't happened yet, but just singing together. I remember um, over the years, several times when after services, a group of Christians would gather together and just start singing together because we were joyous and because we loved singing and because we loved our God. We need to get better at praise and remember that praise that characterized our hearts and our minds and our, our lips perhaps and we rose from the waters of baptism experiencing his salvation. So the uh, lesson of this psalm is uh, that God has come in salvation and that he is coming in salvation. He's coming in judgment, but his judgment is with equity, with balance, with fairness. And so we are going to receive blessings when he comes again. We look forward to that time. And we look forward to it maybe the way the psalmist was describing it. God continually coming, so to speak in His providence and in His care for this world and us continuing to receive His salvation. We always have reason to give thanks to the Lord, to praise Him, and to continue to pen new songs as this song again describes. We saw that in 96 and we saw it here as well. New songs to our Lord to try to, to bring our language into tune with all that He has done for us. May God bless you today.